Great day, everybody. My name is Mark. Welcome to MD Writing. We're going to do another daily discussion. Uh, if it looks like I, I just came from chilling on the beach, no, not yet. Coming shortly. But uh, I was outside dealing with some stuff and got transitional. So, so yeah, I got the cool swag for a few seconds. It'll kind of it'll fade away. The glasses will go back to being normal. But um, I have something really important that I wanted to discuss with you guys. And this is going to be in reference to making sure that you take uh, first aid serious. And what I mean by that is everybody probably has like a little boo-boo kit like uh, bandages and some tweezers and things of that nature. But um, based on an incident that happened, I'm not going to say specifically where, but I'm just going to say in Merlin because the person involved could <laughs> come across this video. So last night there was a shooting um, and I happened to be pulling up someplace and... Um, there was a person on the ground that was shot. There was, you know, a couple police officers, a few police officers on the scene uh, administering this individual. This individual was shot in the chest. And, um, you know, so I guess they were dealing with the front of this person. And, you know, uh, when, I, when I came to the, to, the, to the place of where I was supposed to be anyway, uh, you know, uh, a police officer said, hey, uh, go, go in the house and get out of here. People are shooting people in the chest. Okay, great. People shoot people in the chest. Okay, awesome. So... <laughs> I did not go in the house because uh, I was at the residence where I needed to be and um, I just stood in the driveway to see what was going on um, because evidently if somebody had been shot 20 minutes ago, not to say that the shooter can't come back, but I highly doubt that they're going to come back to do some more shooting when there's like five to ten police officers on the scene because they're probably going to shoot that person to death. Um, but anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, when I saw that the person was bleeding and coughing up blood and blah 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 blah, you know, I, I asked them because they were they were the, the, the police officers that were assisting because you get to the point of diminishing return. There were too many people helping one person. Number one, so um, especially for a, a gunshot, right? So when you have four people on one individual, this person's freaking out, you know. Uh, and all other stuff so but you know they're they're doing what they need to do correct they're, they're trying to help this individual but i'm sure two police officers could have, could have taken care of it while the other two tried to scrub and make sure everything was okay but i'm not a police officer i don't know how things were maybe that's protocol I, I i don't know if you are a police officer please comment below if you've experienced somebody being shot if you if they have three four or five people on one individual who's being who's been shot but in any event moving forward so when I saw that the person had been shot, I'm standing 20 feet away, you know, at, at a safe distance because you want to make sure you, you listen, but you don't have to go in the house. It is what it is. And I said, do you guys need a tourniquet or, or anything of that nature? And the police, one of the police officers said, black guy, he said, no, 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 they were, they were shot in the chest. So they said, we got it. And, and then they flipped the person over and saw that there was an exit wound. And they were scrambling looking for supplies. And I told the guy, I said, hey, look, sir, I have chest heels and quick claw in my truck. And he was like, go get it. And I said, could you ready and let the officer down there know where my truck is that I'm coming so he won't shoot me? Now, you may laugh at that, but I'm black. If they see a black man running through the crime scene, they can think something's going on and shoot me for no reason because I'm opening up the, the truck bed of my car, my, opening up my, my um, dropping the tailgate in my truck to get a book bag. That looks kind of shady. So he said, I'll let him know. I ran down. I got I got my, my first aid kit. I got this, this big box. It's, it's a waterproof container. And it's like a, what is it called? Like a, um, like kind of a trauma kit, right? So um, tourniquets, uh, the little scissors, quick clot, the Israeli bandage, um, all, all, all kind of things, right? More, more stuff than I would probably need. But I ran. I got my stuff. And when I was coming back, uh, the ambulance was coming because we had been there for about five, a little over five minutes or so. And, um, you know, they were coming and of course the ambulance, they were taking the time and this individual was, you know, talking about how, you know, they can't breathe, blah, 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 blah. Because from my understanding with a sucking chest wound, you may not see a whole lot of blood pouring out, but there's internal bleeding taking place and the person is, is choking, they're, they're choking on blood. So 
the guy was like, hey, thank you so much. Because I, 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 I just threw the box over there. I don't know what they took out. I don't know what's... I don't even care. I just wanted them to help the individual so the person wouldn't die since they, they had been shot. But um, but once the Amlam tech came and they started helping, I just went over, grabbed my, grabbed my box. Because, you know, I didn't want them to confiscate it as evidence or anything like that. And um, packed my stuff back up. And they took the individual. So, but all in all, I'm, I'm, I'm making this, this video to pretty much tell you guys that... I personally believe that if you don't have any first aid training, if you don't have CPR training, if you don't know how to use a tourniquet, if you don't, uh, you can, there's many types of tourniquets out there. Like I, I keep the traditional style tourniquet uh, that has a little bar that you, you turn to put pressure, put a massive pressure on a, um, on, a, um, on an area uh, to keep keep the blood from pouring out so you won't bleed to death. But I, but I also know that there's red style tourniquets. There, I have a SWAT T tourniquet, a SWAT T tourniquet. Um, and uh, people use Israeli bandages and, and, and to, to make sure you stop the bleeding. I also keep quick clot. Um, I also keep chest seals. Um, of course, I keep the regular regular stuff like, you know, tweezers and, and um, bandages and regular gauze. And, you know, um, I'm no I'm no doctor. I'm no nurse or anything like that. But um, and I also keep um, uh, I think it's called uh, stop bleeding or something like that. But you can it, it's this it's powder that you can literally put in a wound and you squeeze the wound together for like 30 seconds and it seals, it creates like, it creates a bond. So you just won't keep bleeding and you, you know, won't risk infection. So get some of the basic things because I'm a gun guy, but I do understand that by me carrying a firearm, me going shooting, me going hunting, me going fishing or whatever it may be, or somebody with me that any of us can be shot we can have a negligent discharge from somebody who may be an inexperienced shooter. There are people who are pro shooters or experienced shooters who have shot themselves. One of my a guy from my from my farms group, uh, Big Deuce, he had put up on um on our group when he was at the range. I think last week, an SPO shot himself in the leg, and he said that everybody was looking for a tourniquet. Guys, we got we got to keep up. Ladies, guys, we got to keep our tools with us. So whether it's in the car, in your range bag, because I, I keep stuff in my range bag as well, because um, you know, five minutes could, could be the be the difference between life and death. And uh, you know, tourniquet isn't a permanent uh, a solution, but it's temporary. It's enough time to allow for the person to be able to live and not bleed out and get to the hospital, and also not lose a limb either, as long as it's not on it too long. So learn how to use these things purchase these things if, if you can spend money on, on guns and ammo and knives and whatever it may be make sure you have a decent first aid with, with some with some things that could possibly save somebody's life um but um any of them you may be an anti-gun person but do realize that you can possibly save somebody and i would just like wow that's a blessing and, and, and the police officer the brother he said um he said hey man I, I appreciate you thank you and i was like hey no problem bless you because, uh, you know, God gets all the honor and glory. I just pray that the individual who was hit made it. And based on, I'm assuming it was a pistol round. Um, and the fact that there was an exit wound, it was probably ball ammo. Unless it was, because uh, I'm, I'm no pro on ballistic, but unless it was a, uh, you know, cheap hollow point ammo. Or, or maybe they didn't have the, the proper velocity. Because hollow point ammo is velocity based. And FBI does strenuous tests. Um, with denim and other materials on top of ballistics gel so that or calibrated ballistics gel so that they can see the proper uh, uh, where, where bullets going to going to be most effective and expand so the wound was through and through and it was kind of interesting I guess they figure okay we took care of them on the front side of this person they flip over and they see that there's an exit wound and it's bleeding and this person told me they can't breathe and they're in pain so but any event um, yeah Make sure that you guys learn how to use some, some first aid. Make sure you guys uh, keep in your range bag, keep in your vehicle. My truck, I, I keep uh, a pretty pretty expensive um, first aid kit. But let me tell you how I got it. So through my FSA store, through my job, I mean, everybody may or may not have a job, but there's some, if you do, if you do have a job, your, your uh, flexible spending account, your FSA, they may have a store where you can use the money that's put aside for your FSA to buy things you need so it could be things such as vitamins uh, uh, uh medical related equipment all kind of stuff so i use that to purchase quite a bit of my first aid so that i'm not coming straight out of my pocket but there are things like chest seals 
and and other and other items that I just purchased off Amazon that you can find. So I personally believe you can be shot in the chest. Somebody else could be shot in the chest. Get some chest seals. Learn how to use them. Somebody could cut their leg, fall down the steps if you don't have a even if you don't have firearms, fall down the steps and, and cut their leg on a piece of metal or anything. It may need a tourniquet or have a, a deep cut um, from 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 something and may need um, some quick clot, you know, to, to, to slow the bleeding and stop the bleeding. So I didn't intend for this video to be uh, long, but but guys, this daily discussion was pretty much about making sure that even if you are going to protect yourself with a firearm, make sure that you also have a suitable first aid kit as well. So um, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. And um, take care. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe.